Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com where you can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind the scenes videos and two minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find us every other Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. at bff.fm. And if you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the love of God, do it. It really helps. Welcome back to CamFest 2021. We are talking to the director, Baljeet Sangra, of two films because you're just an overachiever. Uh, we have uh, we have the feature length documentary Because We Are Girls and also the short that preceded it, Have You Forgotten Me? So welcome to the to Bitch Talk. We're so happy to have you. Thank you. So happy to be here. Uh, so can you introduce your two films for our audience? OK, well, the short Have You Forgotten Me is really short, um, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> it's it's meant for television, uh, like little sort of historical moments for British Columbia's 150th uh, birthday coming up. So um, it's a, a collection of I don't know how many. But anyways, it's about the oldest Sikh uh, temple in North America still standing. It was um, it started in like around 1907 or eight. Finally got done at 1911 when it was when it opened. Um, it looks very pioneerish, looks like it belongs out of a Western movie. <laughs> and there's a whole cosmopolitan suburbia, you know, all around it. But then you have this like really old building. But to showcase that building and that history, I my through road was I, um, yeah, I found some people who are, you know, uh, descendants of, you know, uh, settlers of that area, uh, Abbotsford. Fraser Valley. And um, this family is like three, third generation, fourth generation. I found some letters um, from like the 1930s onwards of uh, uh, from a wife who was left behind in India when her husband migrated. And he was, you know, hit with a depression and all these other things and working all kinds of jobs, making very little to no money, wasn't able to bring her. And she's thinking like, have you forgotten me? That's where the title came. And she's like, my entire youth has been waiting for you. And they didn't reunite for for like 20 years so yeah and I think that that happened to a lot of people when they immigrated and also mm -hmm. with you know Asian immigration they didn't want they wanted you to come do some work and go back so you know they they made it very difficult for you to sponsor spouses and all that that sort of thing so yeah that that so it was a nice way of highlighting you know family love loss and history so it's a, you know, just sort of a, a story behind that temple. And the feature, because of her girls, is about the impact of sexual violence on a Punjabi Canadian family in BC. So um, yes, yeah, three sisters after like 20 plus years kept a secret that they were sexually abused by their cousin. And they decide for various circumstances that you find out in the film to come out to break their silence and go after him. Um, they confront their family, but they also go to the police. And, you know, after several years, it eventually gets to the Supreme Court. And so I follow that entire journey. So I follow the journey in real time of them going to court and dealing with their family and sort of that backlash. And then also kind of unraveling it in a way to give contacts, you know, like when they came to Canada, where they settled, they lived in like a Northern mill town, what that was like, the racism, you know, how Bollywood sort of influenced their life, sort of made them more, you know, like a, offered sort of fantasy, um, from the sort of racist reality, like in school and the bullying and, and just kind of what was happening and the parents were doing lots of jobs. So just, you know, try to get some context, why the girls felt they could never tell their parents or each other that this was going on. So you learn a lot, um, you know, about a common story, really, like an immigrant experience and growing up female. And, you know, they came in the 70s to Canada. So a bit of that. Yeah. So that's because we're girls. Yeah, I think um, the two films together really tied well. I, I don't know that you made them to, to show at the same time, but it did just for me, at least because, you know, the, the short Have You Forgotten Me just gives you some idea of what immigrants go through to come here and the struggle they have once they're here and the struggle they have with family back home and just just how complicated that is. And then we come to this this family that's living in our world today 
um, where we think, you know, as first, in, as first generation or whatever, like my parents will never be able to understand me, but at the same time, we'll never be able to understand them. So, so I thought that was a really nice tie in and, and just congratulations that you were able to direct both of those and get them into to cam. Um, but I, what I wanted to ask is, um, does making this film give you some sort of hope that there can be an understanding between the, the older generation and, and ourselves, or is the most we can hope for just that we can say, I love you regardless? That would be amazing. I love you regardless. I think we're, it's a bit of a journey right now to get there. Uh, but the film was, I, I, I had no idea what the response was going to be like. And it was overwhelmingly positive, even, you know, from uh, first generation, um, you know, like the older generation, like, the sister's parents' generation and older. Mm -hmm. They came to the screening. Like some women came to me after the opening. They were crying. They're like grandmothers. And it's kind of like, this is my story. It's all these things you've always had to keep secret, secret, secret. And the culture put so much shame around it. Like, you know, this is going to shame our family, keep it quiet. And, you know, the opposite of shame is empathy, right? So you want to create empathy. And then we have to break our silence. The more we... Um, keep the stuff quiet we just give power to the perpetrators to keep abusing right and i think in the young you know like and say like in our generation and next generation you know people are a lot more cautious around who's around their kids and trust and having that you know conversation about good touch bad touch or treating their sons equal to their daughters right so you see a shift there so kind of bridging between the older you know that, that culture clash you know the older generation you have to start somewhere. So in the film, there's a, the climactic scene is, <laughs> it was pretty long and I had a really hard time like um, shortening it. Like I thought so many important themes were in it. So I, I weave into it twice. <laughs> you go in and it's very emotional. Um, and then we go, we step away and then we come back and it's, yeah, like very emotional, but they confront their parents for the wrongs of their childhood and their parents are just being real. Like, it's not like they're, they're being honest. The father says, you know, I think you have some responsibility too. And they're like, well, we were like 10, 11, 12, but I'm so happy that he was being honest in that moment, you know, and he's trying to figure this out and wants to support his daughters, but these are the view values he's been raised with. Right. So you see that clash. And it's a it's pretty emotional scene about, you know, wanting to be heard and not being heard, you know, um, which we all have experienced growing up. Right. And now and in their case, it's like, you know, they felt he, they, you know, the father may have chose the, the, the cousin that abused him because he saw him as a son. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, he's always valued, you know, sons so much high, very high. So it's empowering because you see sisterhood in that scene. Um and they get to confront their parents. And I think that gives a lot of people some hope or like um, you can, it's a conversation starter. Like I think people have written to us and said, you know, I watched the movie, I watched it with my family. We are now talking about this or we've never been able to talk about this issue. Although it's happened in our family and we've tried to bring it up, it got shut down, but the movie has helped move that dialogue. So, you know, that's sort of the greatest thing you could hope for in a movie, right? Like that, that you want to create change. I mean, that's what it's for, this film, to break that silence and have these hard conversations. But we need to have these conversations, absolutely. You yeah. know, yeah. And part of it, you know, the sisters believe that he was still active in abusing. So they really felt like, you know, um, we got to shut this down, even if it's at risk, you know, but luckily they were, you know, older, more mature, married, you know, like in their careers, living on their own. So you're not sort of, you know, when you're really young, more under your parents sort of situation. Like, so they felt like, you know, we're grown women, you, you know, we got to, we really think he's still active and abusing and we got to do something because literally who would the victims would be, would be, you know, the young girls and their extended mm -hmm. family. Was there ever, how, well, first of all, how long were you filming the family? And was there ever a conversation or were you ever asked to interview the cousin? Um, yeah, I filmed on and off for like about three years. Um, the court case took forever because he kept making all these excuses and he got all these adjournments. So <laughs> they'd be ready to go testify. And then it got adjourned because whatever excuse he made, because obviously the last thing he wanted, the most powerful thing against him would be their testimonies. And that was left at the end of the case. So, mm -hmm. and that's really what I wanted to capture and be there for. So yeah, why we didn't go 
for him, a, it would it would have been I think legally it would, it would have been difficult because um, this case was ongoing. But really, he took so much space in their life, and it's always right. been about him. So now it's their story, it's their truth, it's their experience, you know, and their family. So it made it was actually more empowering to not even have him in there. I had him in a little bit of family video, and then we decided just to cut it out. Not that I needed to see him. Just wondered if. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, when if, got he wanted, bits, if like, he wanted to be heard, you know, and no, you're like, no, you don't no. need to be heard. OK, <laughs> he, he would does not want to be heard. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, uh, his name is out there now. It's public record. People can go to the courts and read the whole transcripts, you know. But it's, the thing is, at the end of the film, I don't know if I'm going to give it away, but the, the, the yeah, they there was a conviction, but it got overturned because the case took mm-hmm. so long to do, which is, but what is a real miss justice sort of a way because he's the one who made all the delays. So right. the justice system is so flawed, especially in terms of, you know, advocating for survivors. It's a tough road. And, you know, if anybody's going to do that, all I would say is, you know, reach out, get a sisterhood, get some support. There's so many organizations out there that, can advocate with you, you know, when you make a statement to the police or go with you to court, like you should definitely reach out. Um, there's a lot of power in sisterhood and, mm-hmm. you know, people will step up and be there for you. Even if they're not your own sisters or in your own like uh, close circle, but there's really, you know, uh, amazing organizations doing incredible work supporting this, you know, um, yeah, for survivors. So I would definitely tell anybody if that's something they want to do, they should really reach out and, or just talk to somebody or call a crisis line. You really just got to think of self-care and just talk. It's hard to bottle something in for so long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love that you say, no, we, I didn't want him to be in it. It, It's their story. This is their turn to be on the screen because I I have four older sisters and that was such a great part of it for me was to witness this bond that they had and um, how, how strong they made each other. Um, and, you know, while this film is about pain and, and resilience, it also is about this, these fun times, these fun mo- dancing parties. Mm-hmm. And it's also about, you know, the beauty and, and connectedness of, of a culture and its history. Mm-hmm. So um, it, can you talk about including those little pockets? Because I, I feel like I needed those spaces to breathe well, too. Oh yeah. You, well, you need moments to breathe, but I mean, it's, you're so, you are more than your trauma, right? So mm-hmm. they did you, although, you know, that was traumatic, but there was also, a lot of good moments of growing up and great memories. And, you know, when they think back, like when I asked them all separately, what was your favorite childhood memory? They all said going to see a Bollywood movie at the theater, you know, and back in the day, they would bring, have those big reels of films yeah. and, and like uh, somebody would get a film and then take it up to different towns and rent the theater. So it'd be sort of a circuit. So they were able to see a movie maybe once a week or once every other week on a Sunday at the local cinema for, and all the Indians would just like flock there to watch it. But that was like an event that the whole family looked forward to going to or else everybody was super busy. Like the parents had jobs and people were coming over that bringing all their family from India. And, you know, there's just so much going on, but that was their moment. They could all just sort of, enjoy an escape and I think they all need an escape you know the kids and the parents and um yeah and and just you know I don't have sisters I have brothers but just sort of that you know banter and humor and you know like among siblings and yeah I want I thought that was really important and they all have really distinct different personalities so I also hope you know and relationships there's that scene where you know one of the sisters daughters talking about dating and you know and the mm-hmm. mom had gone on a couple of dates and she's sort of embarrassed about talking about it it's cute there's like a lot of cute moments and you also have their kids present too right so then you have this sort of you know a uh, different kind of conversation that they didn't have weren't able to have with their own parents you know they're already changing you know um the net like how they um are with the next generation it's like they talk about everything and you know they're affectionate with each other and you, know, you could break the cycle but you could just see that yeah, no, I thought that was really important. And also, I think um, with the sisters, uh, you know, they didn't tell each other when they went through it. But like the, you, later when it all kind of came out and, they, you know, uh, one of the eldest sister really stayed with me. She said, you know, I wasn't able to help them then when, it, you know, when I thought it was happening, but I'm able to help them now by standing beside them to also say, you know, this happened to me in court. So, yeah, there's like all these other kind of really interesting layers to like you know, um, 
and you know, she says in the movie, I wish I would be happy if we just swept this under the rug. I don't, I don't really want to deal with this. She goes, mm-hmm. but you know, I'm standing with my sisters, but the fact that she did it, I could just feel knowing her over this time, like how much she's grown and how much she's grown. Even when we had screenings and the audience response to her, and you know, it's really, it's been pretty uh, beautiful to watch. Yay. You led into my next question. Yay. <laughs> Yay it's like, you knew, um, <laughs> but I, I did want to know, you know, watching, watching the whole process and the story and the family um, reckoning with, with everything that was happening. Um, are you seeing that they're kind of, um, are they healing together as a family? Are they healing through the trauma? Um, how's, how's mom and dad? How's Jesse? Yeah, no, I think everybody's, um, you know, it's a work in progress. I think, you know, healing, but um, I know, you know, um, sisters have talked about now, you know, their relationship has changed with their parents. Yeah. You know, in the T scenes, mm. um, Uh, one of the sisters says to the father, you know, you don't even look at me in the eye. Like when I come over and now they're like, well, he looks at us in the eye and it's improved, but also the father and mother I've heard from the wider community, you know, Mm. that was brave of you to do this film. It's important. So, you know, well done, you know, at the screening, a lot of young men came up to the dad and just said, thank you. You know, even though, you know, it's difficult and he says his truth, but thank you. So um, yeah, no, I think, it's, and, and, and we've had a, such a good response and we luckily we were able to uh, release it before the pandemic. So, you know, having that uh, people responding and interacting and sharing their truths and conversation, it's all been really healing. And I'm glad to hear that for the parents or specifically the father, because, of, you know, while I don't agree at all with what he's saying, I can't ever, like we said in the right. beginning of the interview, relate to where he's coming from. And that's so brave of him to put it out there yeah. on film, let alone to say it face to face with his daughters. So, yeah, really powerful scene. I, it definitely moved me. And we really appreciate you telling this story. Um, and and hopefully a lot of people get a lot of help from it. So thank you so much for being here. Again, we've been talking to the director, uh, Baljeet Sangra, of Because We Are Girls and the short Have You Forgotten Me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about us, you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com. This podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show's edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions. 